Hello, my name is Richard Stepp, Standard Plans Engineer with the Railway Design Office in Tallahassee. Today we'll provide a brief training for you regarding our new policy for street lighting color temperature by context. So starting from the very beginning, what is correlated color temperature? Correlated color temperature, or CCT, is a way to describe the color of the light produced by different lamp options. And so moving to the left on our diagram, lower color temperature is considered to be warmer or softer and is more amber or orange in color. And so around the 2000 CCT mark, that's similar to candlelight or something like a campfire. And now moving to the right and up to scale, higher color temperature is considered cooler and is whiter with increasing blue content. And now to describe some background on our existing conditions on Florida's roadways, the old high pressure sodium lights still make up the vast majority of installation. These high pressure sodium lights are very warm in color, about 2200K, similar in color to candlelight. Moving forward, LED lights became Florida's policy in 2016, and the primary options for LED lights are 3000K and 4000K as shown here. For comparison, 3000K is sort of the happy medium between the very white light and the very warm light, 3000K is similar to the incandescent soft lights that have been in our homes for previous decades. And 4000K is considered to be much cooler, which is very similar in color to the fluorescent lights that may be in your office or the type of white lights that you might see at a gas station. And so previously, FDOT specifications require a CCT less than or equal to 4000K. No further guidance was provided, and so the result is that the majority of installations installed in recent years are 4000K. Currently, it's estimated that about 9% of the lights on Florida's roadways are 4,000K and about 5% are 3,000K, with the remainder being the old, warm, high-pressure sodium. And with that said, we are seeing quite a mixture on Florida's roadways, and we think there's some room for improvement in terms of being more consistent, predictable, and repeatable. And also, with the new national research we've seen, it gives us more leeway to meet more of our needs with our color temperatures. So our update is per Roadway Design Bulletin 2202, new requirements are given for street lighting color temperature by roadway context. In addition to the benefits of being more consistent, the result is that the majority of roadways would use the warmer 3000K light. And we'll discuss the benefits of warmer light in a moment. And so moving forward, we'll share with you our considerations for choosing color temperature as we developed our new color temperature policy. And so first and foremost, when we're deploying roadway lighting, we want to ensure optimum driver visibility, we want roadway safety, and that the lighting we're providing is resulting in the best possible driver performance. And then once that's established, we're free to meet some of our other needs for roadway lighting, but again, only after we've established the safety of the lighting choices. And so our two primary sources for studying the effectiveness of the lighting are the new national research study, Solid State Lighting Volume 2, and in addition to that, FDOT performed its own conservative analysis where we compared detection distance to stopping site distance. In the conclusions, first as shown by ASHTO and then later verified by our independent analysis, is that 3000K has the same driver visual performance as 4000K for most locations. And additionally, based on FDOT's conservative analysis, it was determined that 4000K does benefit some limited high-speed roadway contexts. And you'll see these contexts when we present the new FDM table for color temperature usage near the end of this training. Now, given this knowledge that the warmer 3000K lighting may be used effectively in the majority of locations, we're free to consider meeting the other needs of roadway lighting, which may benefit from warmer lighting. When presenting this topic to our district lighting experts, directors, and executive workshop, we had delved fairly deeply into some of these considerations and justifications. But that said, in the interest of time, we'll just give you a quick summary of this background here. So first up is environmental needs with concerns for wildlife, light pollution, and sky glow, which resulted in the International Dark Sky Association recommending 3000K or warmer lighting. Next are aesthetic needs and considerations for widespread public feedback that have overwhelmingly called for 3000K or warmer lighting near residents' homes and businesses. In addition, cities and local municipalities have called for this warmer lighting near aesthetic areas such as downtown districts and tourist areas. Next up are the health benefits, where the goal would be to reduce the perceived glare from the additional blue light and the higher color temperature lights. And those whiter lights have received the attention of the American Medical Association, where they have called for 3000K or warmer lighting. Additional considerations are energy efficiency, where it's known that the technology of the warmer lights is rapidly improving. Another consideration for being more prescriptive with our color temperature requirements are the maintenance benefits of applying color temperature in a more consistent and repeatable way. And this is especially true where the vast majority of lights would receive the same warmer color temperature. And so maintenance inventories and planning is simplified and improved in that way. 
And one final consideration are the national trends for color temperature, as seen in policies for state DOTs around the country. And through recent polling through our AASHTO Committee on Design, we know that states are trending towards warmer color temperature usage. And we know of specific examples where states have changed to entirely using 3000K lighting based on widespread public feedback. And the results of these changes have been very well received by the public. And with that, we can present to you our new table for correlated color temperature by context. And when we say context, it's important to note that that's a broader term that refers to attributes such as design speed and roadway context classification. And so here you can see that our table is organized by design speed, roadway context classification, and then the corresponding correlated color temperature that will be required. And then moving down the rows, this is organized by arterials and collectors, and then limited access facilities. First up is 4000K, which is used for high-speed suburban contexts. And so C3 is a context classification where many pedestrians and features like marked crosswalks and bus stops would be expected. And so when this is mixed with a very high design speed, 55 mile per hour or greater, the wider light of 4000K would be required. 4000K shows a detection distance advantage to accommodate larger stopping site distance for greater than or equal to 55 miles per hour. Next, the warmer 3000K light is then required for all other contexts. With far fewer pedestrians expected, low surrounding light levels, or lower design speeds, 3000K is implemented where it has the same statistical visual performance as 4000K. And looking through the current inventory of FDOT's roadways, it's estimated that 3000K would be used for about 95% of FDOT's roadway miles. And so this warmer light would be used consistently at most locations moving forward. And last but not least, the table offers an even warmer 2700K option for low-speed application. The studies have shown that light color is particularly insignificant at these lower speeds. So for all contexts with a design speed of 35 miles per hour or less, 2700K may be used. And this benefits aesthetic areas, residential areas, natural areas, historic areas, parks, campuses, or wherever the locals prefer it. For example, the city of St. Augustine prefers to keep this warmer light for some of their historic and downtown districts. Next up, we'll explain some of the supporting policy that was provided in the bulletin's new FDM language that supports this new table. And so first, clearly, an all-new lighting project where no lighting had existed previously would follow the requirements of this table. That said, regarding existing lighting systems and complete lighting replacement projects, it's important to note that this new policy is not retroactive. And so essentially this new table and these new lighting color temperature requirements do not justify a new project on their own. You would leave existing luminaires in place unless an all new lighting project is warranted for reasons other than CCT. So for example, in addition to meeting FDM requirements, district requirements, and warranting requirements, replacement of a complete lighting system is justified for road widening, upgrading to LED, replacing aging systems with high failure rates, or meeting current illumination requirements. A complete new lighting system is not justified for only changing from existing 4000K to 3000K. So any 4000K was installed based on the best information we had at the time, and we know that it's still safe. And so for that reason, it doesn't justify any additional funding from FDOT only to change to a warmer color. Next up in our new FDM language is the topic of individual light replacements or additions. And this is where small numbers of luminaires are added or replaced for maintenance or other purposes among a much larger existing system. So when this occurs and only a few lights are added or replaced, table 231.2.3 does not apply. Instead, the designer should match the CCT of the existing lighting system to maintain color consistency. So maintaining color consistency with existing systems is generally the goal. And sticking with the topic of consistency, we'll now discuss roadside facilities. And so the FDM language explains to use the same CCT as the nearest roadway lighting for consistency. So basically, if the nearest roadway lighting is visible from the roadside facility through line of sight, then you match that roadway lighting. Such facilities would include, but are not limited to, sidewalks, shared use paths, toll plazas, rest areas, and way stations. So for example, with a limited access facility that uses 3000K, a rest area that was located along that roadway would use 3000K lighting as well to match the roadway. So this policy of matching and consistency is fairly intuitive in that regard. 
And last, the new FDM language provides a reminder for environmental areas. It reminds that the CCT requirements of FDM 231.2.1 for wildlife sensitive lighting supersede the requirements of this table, 231.2.3. And so generally when providing that wildlife sensitive lighting for sea turtles or other wildlife requirements, you'd be using that amber lighting that's defined per the specifications and categorized that way on the APL. And that amber lighting is even warmer in color temperature than the CCTs that are shown on this table. And with that, we've reached the end of our color temperature by context update training. Thank you for your time and attention.